Welcome back to Health, Wellbeing and Lifestyle, where we invite professionals in their fields to educate and inspire our viewers to feel healthier, more balanced and live a lifestyle they love. And today for our first guest, for a viewer's request, we have Deborah Stathis talking about tragic opportunities. Welcome Deb. Thank you. Thanks Linda. So you talk about um, going from trauma to opportunities. Yes. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Absolutely. So trauma provides us with uh, a unique position where we can actually create opportunities. And what we do there is we shift our focus to look at the lesson, what we've learned within that experience of trauma, challenge, adversity, stress as well. And then what we can do is we shift our focus to that lesson, what we've learned, and we then choose to use the knowledge that we have gained there to improve ourselves and our life. I actually call this a tragic opportunity. <laughs> so the tragedy is the stress, challenge, emotions, pain experience. The opportunity comes from how we choose to focus on the learning and improve ourselves and our life. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Can you tell us a bit more then about um, from there going with um, some of those steps that you talk about? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Creating, like I said, what I call a tragic opportunity is a two-step process. So we start off with personal assessment. So personal assessment is a review of ourself, our beliefs, our behaviours and our emotions. And the aim is to develop a deeper understanding into ourself and into our trauma and our challenges and the way we have we have interpreted them in order to then shift our perspective for the better and learn about ourselves. The next step is the action plan, which is key. So the action plan is then taking the knowledge that we gain in personal assessment and using that to improve ourselves, make better decisions and choices and improve all areas of our life. Okay, well, what would be an example of something for something, for instance, that comes up in daily life that you could go, you could say this is how I can, I can look at it differently or? It actually comes up every, day, every single day. And I, I create tragic opportunities for myself all the time when I'm particularly getting very stressed out, uh, perhaps with trying to juggle everything. I'm a mum of two young children and um, it, it can be really hard sometimes to just get out of the door and you've got two screaming children and you've got to get to a meeting on time, uh, you've maybe forgotten your, your briefcase or whatever it is. And it's easy to think, oh God, nothing ever goes my way. Or you can flip and say, okay, this feeling right now, what is it doing? Is it giving me the opportunity to think about why I'm acting this way? What is it that is making me so frantic? Is it the sound of the children? Like for myself, I've been through a lot of trauma. So sometimes a lot of now loud noises when my children get very frantic actually sparks a bit of the PTSD. So for me, I need to stop for a moment and take that opportunity to grow to, and say, they're children. This is not noise that is negative. This is positive noise. Actually, they're beautiful, fun children. If I run with this, I'll actually get out of the door quicker. So the opportunity is to get them on board, learn about why I'm getting frantic in, in that scenario and actually improve the environment and get out the door happily instead of frantically. How can, how can we have for the viewers, what could they do in their daily lives to create uh, success from trauma as you talk about. What's really important is self-reflection and thinking about how and why we do things and that's where the two-step process comes in. So if we're when we're faced with a challenge, stress, trauma, taking that time to sit and reflect on why we made certain decisions and why we feel the way we do in certain situations enables us to gain incredible insight into ourself and into how and why we do things. By doing so, we can identify what serves us and what doesn't. This then enables us to make better decisions for ourselves, for our life, to improve our relationships because we understand where perhaps we don't have the most empowered perspective or perhaps our perspective has been warped due to uh, stress, trauma, our, our previous experiences childhood, etc. So we can really use that knowledge to change every, every day of our life and every aspect of our life. For our viewers out there, how would people apply this in their life? What would be the top tip that you would suggest to them? The top tip is taking action. So we can do as much personal 
development and assessment as, as we like, and that's great. However, if we don't take action, if we don't change things that we do every single day and actively work on ourselves and, and change our perspective, nothing will change in our life. So what it's really important to, to remember is that it, it doesn't really matter, for lack of a better way of saying it, what's happened in our childhood or what trauma and stress we've had. We actually can be empowered to change that and have a happy and fulfilled future by taking action to change how we behave every day and the way we view life by you know, using the knowledge that, that we gain by looking into ourselves. Oh, thanks so much, Tip, for Thank that. You. That's wonderful. And for more information on Deb's status and steps to success, please go to our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And now we'll go to break. And after the break, we'll be back with Mark Carazzo talking about the meaning of life. Welcome back and next we have Mark Carazzo, our business consultant and coach and as part of the positive psychology series he's talking to us today about the importance of meaning. Welcome Matt, Mark. Welcome Linda. Yeah, so what, what, do, what does this mean? The me what do you mean by the meaning of life? Well by the meaning of life I, I'm not talking about the deeply philosophical question of, of what is the meaning of our lives, I'm talking about something larger in our lives than ourselves which gives us purpose and motivation. Uh, it's a very important concept, it's been proven to be so and it's unique to every individual. So it's the thing that drives us every, every day, Linda. And why is finding meaning so important? Well it gives us our drive and, and motivation in life. It's uh, a set of goals for us, something that we can measure our life by every now and then and of course when we achieve certain steps on the road to our goal, we feel a sense of accomplishment. Now, so far as, as the research suggests, uh, if we've got people that are in the later stages of their life, we find that they're more likely to live longer if they've got a sense of meaning and purpose. And, and we also know that people that have meaning and purpose in life are generally happier, have better well-being, uh, better physical and mental health, and are less likely to suffer from depression. So meaning is really one of the very most important pillars in the positive psychology area. And one particular person whose work in this area I respect is an Australian psychiatrist and neurologist called Viktor Frankl. He's also a Holocaust survivor and he believes a firm sense of meaning is absolutely essential to human flourishing and, and he used meaning uh, in order to motivate people around him going through the very distressing circumstances that are really hard to imagine for anybody I, uh, through the Holocaust, he motivated people to want to live on by reminding them or pointing to their purpose and meaning in life. So he's very, very well equipped to talk about the importance of meaning, Linda. And so would that change through, uh, through our lives? Yeah, I think, our, I think the many of our, uh, of our life or our purpose changes uh, throughout the course of our lives. Uh, it, it, I know for, for many people, the, having children is a classic example of where their focus and attention might change. Uh, there's be other people out there whose purpose of life might be to assist with the environment or to leave the world in a better place. Other uh, people find meaning from, from religions and, and, and formal faiths and observances like that. But yes, it does change through the course of our lives. And if you don't find meaning during your life, can that, what can you do about it? It's a hard question. I think some of us forget to really contemplate what the meaning or purpose of our lives would be. So the first thing I'd say is to do that. If you're not getting anywhere with that, I'd go back to the other basic important pillars leading to well-being, which are connection and relationships. I'd focus on them. I'd focus on acts, acts of kindness. Uh, maybe volunteering some sort of social benefit from what you're doing with your life. So uh, engagement in activities is also very important. Find something that you enjoy doing and get yourself immersed in that. And I tend to suspect that uh, eventually meaning or purpose will, will reveal itself whilst you're doing those processes, Linda. And um, what about um, during your work or other routine things? How would, how would you find meaning during those times? It's really important that we find meaning in what we do. In fact, uh, the evidence out there suggests that people that can find 
some sort of social benefit in what they're doing or something within their work that they care for perform a lot better. So uh, I think we need to look at our work and look at what the ultimate outcome is of what we do to find where we find some relevance to it. People like that who see their work as a calling perform better, uh, enjoy their work more and obviously enhance their whole life. So yes, we can get meaning out of work and, and we should. And it's also worth considering what we get out of the mundane tasks we do at home. We might view something as simple as, as washing the dishes or vacuuming as fairly unimportant work. But if we look at it in the context of what it's doing to ensure a happy household, then we're obviously going to feel more satisfied while we do it and, and perform it better when we do it. And there is a bit of research done on hospital cleaners. The first group of hospital cleaners saw their work as, as lowly skilled and unimportant. The second group, the ones that perform better, saw their work as something that bettered the lives of patients and medical staff. So it's sometimes changing the way you see things and the, and the things you see will change. So that's very important in, in finding meaning. And, and how would finding meaning help in relationships in your life? Well, I think when you're doing something that you enjoy doing, uh, you're going to obviously put a lot of energy into it. You're going to find people of the same interests of you. So you've got that bond before it starts. So finding meaning in what you want to do and getting involved in activities that involve other people is going to impliedly enhance a lot of your relationships and connectedness, Linda. And would there be any more tips that you could give our viewers? No, just, just that. I think uh, start with, start with the, the basics of, of what we believe is important for wellbeing. Look to relationships, look to engagement, look to kindness and care and also try to look at what you're doing and work through the processes until you find some meaning in it for others and that will give you the start of a sense of purpose. You'll be back next week to talk to us more about relationships. Uh, so for more about Mark Carazzo and the meaning of life, then please go to our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And after the break, Con Nichols is talking about his personal transformation. Welcome back. And now we have Con Nichols, our property advisor and wellbeing advocate. And Con's been with us with a series of interviews on improving your environment to meet your lifestyle. Today he's talking about his personal transformation. And as you can see from the photos, uh, there's been a huge transformation for Con. So Con, over to you. What could you tell us about a bit more about your story? The story started almost a couple of years ago. And then, you know, I walked past my bathroom and my mirror and I stood in front of the mirror and I saw someone that I did not recognize. Yes, it was violent by in a sense that I cried, I shouted. I, I was actually on a stage that I didn't know where I was going or coming. Because indirectly, I was committing suicide with food. There's no difference if you're gonna be a food addict or an alcoholic or a drug addict, you're still gonna die. At that point, at that moment, that Monday, 7.22 exactly, I took control of my life. And from then on, I never looked back and from 151.5 kilos to 76 kilos, which is 50% of my body weight, it gave me, not only gave me more energy, it gave me a new me, it gave me a new direction in life, but also it gave me an opportunity to enjoy my family. And people say to me, Con, what's the most important thing that you, you can do now? It's the little things that might call it the big differences. To me, it was two weeks ago that I went and bought my girls some office desks and literally I was assembling the office desks. So I had to pull out the drawers and I had to go literally underneath 
that draws to, to screw the bench top. At that moment, I'm down there with my back inside you to confine spice, and it hit me, Linda, because I could not even, even think of doing it in the past. And here I am now doing the small things in life that might cause the big differences. When you say girls, is that your daughters? Yeah, my, my twin girls, look, um, look, I'm 57, and I've got twin girls, five-year-olds. So people say, what's your why? Well, this is my why. I mean, I need to be around. I need to, to live as much possible as I can so I can enjoy them. And at the end of the day, is it really fair if dad passed away? No. So. To me, that was the breaking point. To me, it was the point that I said, you know what, Con? I'm taking action right now. There's no excuses. There's no excuse anymore. Either we do this properly or just don't worry about it. And this is why a lot of people these days, they keep saying, oh, we're so busy, you know, uh, we're gonna do it tomorrow, and they bring all these excuses. There's no excuses, for goodness sake, it's you. It's you, your life. There's no excuse about your life. You should be coming first. No second or third. You, as an individual person, you always should put yourself always first. And so what would be your big secret thing, Con? The big secret, well, the, the secret is very simple. And when I tell people my secret, they say, is that all? My diet or my program, depends which way you want to call it, I get up in the morning and I have two glasses of hot water. Now, a bit of lemon, how much lemon depends what you like. Now, then my snacks or my lunch, uh, so before that I go back to breakfast. Breakfast, what I do, I boil five eggs, hard boil, and I peel them off and I throw the yellow part and I eat the white because the white is all protein and it helps you feed your muscles and your tummy. And of course, during lunchtime or you know, around there, I have my chicken fillets, which obviously there's no salt because salt maintains water in your body. Put a bit of lemon juice, a bit of spices, just it depends how you like it. And the same thing with fish as well. So you rotate fish, chicken, so on. And at night, I also, before I go to sleep, I also have more two glasses of whole water with lemon again. But the secret weapon is my meatballs. When I'm saying my meatballs, uh, twice a week I cook maybe you know, 60, 80 meatballs per time. And when I cook them, I, I don't fry them. I put them in, in, the, in the oven and I bake them with my own natural meats and, and healthy meats and so on. No salt once again. So I bake them and I put them in the fridge. Now you say to me, why would you cook them and put them in the fridge? Aha, uh -huh. the reason why we put them in the fridge Let's say you and I now we're home and watching telly and you feel a bit peckish and you want to go and you get your cupboard and some chocolate, some biscuits or whatever be the case. In my case, I go in my fridge, I get a handful of meatballs, which are very healthy, very natural, and that stops my hunger. Now, if that's not simple, if that's not healthy, and guess what, Linda? It costs no money. Because what I'm saying, cost money, it's not something you're going to go outsource things as well. It's you've got those things. And believe it or not, by using this particular food structure, I can say, you save money. In addition, of course, you've got to have your veg and so on, but this is the core, core diet, you might say. Mm. So we've, um, and, and what about, did you do things like uh, incorporate exercise into what With you're doing? With exercise, um, and please to all the audience out there, it's very, very important before you do any exercise, seek professional advice. You know, what can your body, because remember, we all very different and we all got different levels of fitness and we all got different levels of weight. Now, when I was 151 and a half kilos, obviously I could not go for a run or for a jog, it would be impossible. So I discover things, for example, walking and swimming in the pool, you know, go for a very, you know, just very, very basic things, once again. But once again, as your fitness picked up a little bit more higher, you did a lot more things better, and you did things more stressful as well. Remember something, your muscles, unless you stress them out, unless you use them, they're not gonna work. 
So, and that's the golden point, you know, and, and, uh, and, and to me, that mentality, it's very simple. And at the end of the day, it's all maths. Example, if you need a thousand calories to survive, right? And if you're gonna burn 1,500 calories, you're gonna lose weight. So if you eat, you gotta burn. That's the secret. Thanks, Con, so much for sharing that and your story. Thank you. And for more information on Con's secret, then please go to his webpage on our website. That's Con Nichols, and our website is healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And for now, we'll say bye-bye, and we'll be back next week with more amazing interviews. Thank you so much.